Born to be One. Coming together to redefine container shipping. We are one, believing in the power of working together. We take on new challenges every day with the uniqueness you see in our color. Overcoming obstacles beyond borders and cultures. On the sea, the land, and in the hearts of people. We refine the way the world moves. One has power. The strengths of many united. As a team with customers and partners, we can give life to a new way to move the world. As one, we can. One. Ocean Network Express. SMBC. Traditional. Consistent. Precise. Professional. Delicate. Detailed. Dedicated. Speedy. Adaptable. Creative. Innovative. Polite. Quality, Quality from, from Japan. Japan. The, the best, best of business, business in Asia. Asia. SMBC. Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation. At SNBC, we are growing with Asia. And we've made a commitment to this community that has given us so much. Whether financing infrastructure projects or delivering customized services to our many clients, we will continue to serve Asia with speed and efficiency. Rising with Asia, SMBC, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation. The path to success calls for wisdom that knows results. We had the wisdom and the power to bring ideas to fruition. We're by your side, offering support as the force that motivates business. For example, through our cash management service, we consider ourselves your right hand for growth in Asia, and we want you to know our mark. Rising with Asia, SMBC, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation. New value is continuously being created, and society is in a state of constant flux. Every company and organization needs to make unprecedented changes. Abeam Consulting works closely with its clients to transform the structure of companies and organizations and build connections between them to bring about social change. Unlocking unrivaled value with the will, the highly diverse and specialized capabilities, and the experience to envision the future. Growing together with our clients and with society. Progressing as one team. Remaining a real partner through it all. Build beyond as one. We strive to be a creative partner. Abim Consulting.
A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to the Nikkei Forum, Innovative Asia Securing a Sustainable and Resilient Future. This event is hosted by Nikkei and sponsored by Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, Abim Consulting and Ocean Network Express. I'm Dylan Lowe, correspondent at Nikkei Asia Singapore Bureau, and it is my great honour and pleasure to be taking you through the proceedings today. Now, we are streaming live from Hybrid Experience Hall at Suntech Singapore. Some of you are joining us physically, but most of you will be watching us online. Wherever you come from, we thank you for being here with us. Now, Nikkei Forum Innovative Asia is back in its fourth year as we acclimate to a post-pandemic, environmentally conscious world. Technology and digitalization are being embraced globally like never before. Today, we have gathered some of the front runners who are spearheading this change and creating further business opportunities. As we are about to begin, just some quick housekeeping announcements as we are, of course, still in the era of the pandemic. Kindly keep your mobile devices on silent mode to, facil to facilitate a smooth event. It's for safe management measures. We do request you to keep group sizes to a maximum of five. Kindly don't mingle beyond your respective zones and do remember to keep your masks on at all times. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, to kick things off, we are very honoured to have Microsoft Asia's President, Mr. Ahmed Mazari, joining us remotely for a keynote conversation with Nikkei Asia's Chief Business News Correspondent, Akito Tanaka. Tanaka-san, over to you. All right. Thank you for joining uh, Innovative Asia. My name is Akito Tanaka, and I'm the chief business correspondent, chief business news correspondent for Nikkei Asia. Uh, we have today Mr. Ahmed Mazari. He is the president of Microsoft Asia. Uh, Mr. Mazari oversees the diverse Asia region, comprising 20 countries across APAC, Asia Pacific, Australia, and New Zealand, uh, Greater China region, India, and Japan. Thank you, thank you so much, Ahmed, for joining. Thank you, Akita, for having me. What a great pleasure. Uh, we don't hear his voice on the on stage. Okay. I'm off mute. Oh, there you go. You thank you very much. Right. We hear you now. Well, thank you so much, Ahmed. Um, uh, let's thank, start. Thank you, Akita, for having me. Great. All right. So we will uh, kick up, kick start with the the keynote uh, conversation. Now, first of all, uh, for people who, I'm sure everybody's uh, familiar with Microsoft, but maybe not many are familiar with Microsoft Asia, uh, for this perspective, um, first of all, please tell us some of the, uh, the business priorities and strategies uh, for Microsoft in Asia. Uh, where you are investing uh, as a company, and where do you see the biggest uh, growth opportunity in the, in the Asia region, which is quite big and diverse? Uh, thank you, Akito, again, once for having me. I, I get an echo. Are you hearing me all right? Okay, perfect. Uh, our biggest priorities are where we believe the opportunities to accelerate Asia's potential and really live Microsoft's vision of empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So if you look at Asia, uh, by 2040, 50% of the global GDP will rest in Asia. You rightly pointed out, it's extremely diverse. Our dynamism is further accentuated as we have some of the most advanced economies of the world, um, like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, to uh, other markets that are nearly developed, some developing, and some skipping many generations of technology. Uh, that's the uniqueness of this market. And therefore, the rapid growth of digital natives, startups, unicorns, unicorns, decacorns. And therefore, it's a great opportunity and equally a responsibility to address the gaps we see in economies, within societies, in healthcare, in financial inclusion. We are a trusted 
Ally, and we've been in business for over 45 years across the world. And our mission is to empower enterprises, small businesses, and help democratize technology. New generations of digital natives are born here. Asia is becoming the startup capital of the world. Over 50% of global startups are in Asia. And as we know, close by in China, ByteDance is the most valuable startup of the world at 350 billion. Also India is now the third largest uh, creating unicorns after the US and China and even ahead of markets in, in Europe. Equally, I'm excited that Korea is beginning to invest quite significantly in new technologies. But our role as an organization at Microsoft with our mission is about creating inclusive growth and creating sustainable impact. Closing the funding gap for women uh, as democratizing technology means allowing access to tech, it also means allowing access to capital. We created a partnership with She Loves Tech we also participated in a global upskilling program, and it especially becomes relevant in what some people call the great resignation, we call the great reshuffle. We've upskilled 6 million people through LinkedIn Learning, Microsoft Learning, GitHub, and more. And we're now pushing on growing and making our footprints sustainable, as equally the footprints of our customers and partners. We are in many data center regions uh, in Asia, 11. We are going to create 100,000 jobs by 2025, enabling in our ecosystem. And equally, we will stand on the pledge of being carbon neutral as a company by 2030. So we're wanting to make sure that the growth that we help drive in the economies is equitable and sustainable at the same time. And therefore, in summary, our longstanding commitment to this region, Akito, is Microsoft has a long history here, 35 years. We have 30,000 employees in Asia, half of which are in R&D, research, and engineering. We operate in over 20 markets, with 100,000 partners. Great, thank you so much, Ahmed. Um, as, the, as the president of Microsoft, uh, you've been describing uh, the innovations in, in Asia as made in Asia to, to born in Asia. And I thought this was a significant, I mean, great term. And we've, we've, we've discussed about this um, previously, but um, what, what does this uh, born in Asia, sorry, uh, made in Asia to born in Asia mean? And how are innovations in Asia different from the rest of the world? That's a great question, uh, Akito, thank you. Um, it, might, it might sound a, a little subtle, but the, uh, the differences are quite, pretty significant. I mean, when I was growing up, um, uh, it was the most exciting thing in Asia would have been a factory being located here where products were designed elsewhere in the world and shipped to be made in Asia. Uh, the most exciting thing was uh, a second generation of technology uh, being rolled out in the markets. That has really changed. Born in Asia is innovation coming from a new breed of startups, new breed of mobile first, digitally first companies and even some brick and mortar companies that are pivoting to becoming more digitally and tech savvy, thereby actually sometimes skipping generations of technology. Asia is changing the game. I mean, the super app is an Asia innovation. Live retail is an Asia innovation. Short form video is an Asia innovation, right? FinTech, new FinTech models. So the Asian innovation is characterized by creativity, originality, and knowledge. Entrepreneurs aspire to go from idea to unicorn and are ready to partner. As I pointed out, 50% of the new startups are actually in Asia. Their ambition to fuel the ecosystem, generate more innovation, 
ultimately powering the Asian economy. And we're seeing already business models from Asia being now rolled out in the, in the developed world, which is really the exciting bit. As Microsoft, we have some strategic partnerships where we're helping drive transformation. We enable Grab the super app and we enable Bukala Park to become more than just an e-commerce platform. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned a little bit about this and how is Microsoft supporting uh, this vibrant ecosystem? Um, it's, it's, it's very few, uh, huge, growing rapidly. I'm sure you're doing a lot on the cloud computing space. You're investing in startups. Could you go into a little detail in these initiatives? I'll try to. That's, that's a great question, uh, Akito. And, and uh, sometimes uh, Microsoft is not well known enough in our ecosystem on the breadth of solutions and products and technologies that we bring in. Uh, and, and today may not be the time to go in there. But we're a company with an incredible span of products and platforms. We enable the smallest companies in the world, like startups I spoke about, to the largest enterprises of the world. And we as a Microsoft system, we're enabling uh, people to help build businesses, to become more productive, to remain more agile and to compete. So we recently launched what is known as the Founders Hub. The Founders Hub provides technology, coaching and support to grow and to build businesses and grow them. It includes $150,000 in Azure credits, free trusted development tools, personalized guidance from experts and more. I mean, if, if you think about being a startup, it's the best place to come and look for technology and get support. You then start thinking about capital and you think about you know, women in, in the tech force. That's the biggest opportunity for, for the next unlock of productivity in the world as we know. Uh, globally, women attract 2% of capital and technology. And therefore we said, we must help enable that. And we're gonna help work with Shilov's tech to unlock 1 billion in capital for women led businesses by 2030. And we're very excited about that. We then have a venture arm called, called M12 that invests in early stage companies that are developing some cool technology. Uh, again, one that we, we did was in, in Malaysia very recently. It was in the press, so I can talk about it uh, as we did in Australia. Uh, we, through another investment process, which is actually centered in our engineering team, do investment in companies that are building technologies that actually plug into some of our products and help us accelerate our product development cycle. Then we start to say, what is the greatest challenge we all face? I think the greatest challenge we all face is human capital. And with LinkedIn, we're enabling large and small businesses to help find, train the best human capital in the world. All this enabled by GitHub, which has 73 million developers with more than 200 million repositories of source code. The Global Skilling Initiative, which we launched about 18 months ago, has so far certified 42 million people. And we believe that is just the starting point to help staff for the 700 million jobs that tech will create in this decade. Great, thank you. And you've also announced um, a plan or it's, it's actually an ongoing plan. So you, you've, um, you've actually made all these investments already. Uh, you're building uh, massive data centers uh, in, the, in the region. Could you sort of touch on that as well? Where, where are you building? Uh, what are the reasons for huge investment and whatnot? Sure. Um, you know, we continuously look at markets that uh, we can help enable and drive digital transformation. Uh, we recently announced uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, and we are excited about uh, launching one in Taiwan and in, and in New Zealand as well. We believe these not only create the jobs that the world uh, in tech is seeing a lot of 
and and as traditional jo jobs are getting converted into into tech jobs but we also see great employment opportunities don't both direct and indirect if you think about uh, a data center akito it is hundreds of million dollars of investment from physical brick and mortar to uh, the, the the best uh, and high quality hardware to creating uh, the best networks, uh, low latency networks. So across the board, we see several thousands jobs being created just between Indonesia and Malaysia. We expect that number to be north of 25,000. Very interesting. Um, one of the unique thing, uh, especially in, in Southeast Asia that you see as, as a tech reporter, which, which I am, is that uh, all the thing that you've mentioned is very true. However, all the other competitors of Microsoft are thinking the same way. Um, and this could be Amazon, or it could be Google, or even the Chinese cloud uh, giants or tech giants, uh, Alibaba or Tencent. They are also looking at the huge potential of startup ecosystem growing in Southeast Asia. And they're also, both, all of them are investing uh, heavily in, in cloud computing. They are also investing in um, promising startups, uh, sunicorns and unicorns. So if you look at the competitive um, landscape, how, how is Microsoft uh, different uh, from other competitors or your friends, I should say, uh, in the region? Um, and yeah, what, 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 what's the benefit of, of partnering with Microsoft? If, you, if you're a startup um, entrepreneur um, and all those you know, people, Sure, uh, Akira, firstly, uh, let me start by thanking everyone in the ecosystem who is investing. Uh, investment means progress, investment means more jobs get created and we help enable societies to progress. And hopefully uh, as we transition from one generation to another, we would have left uh, a better planet uh, for, uh, for all of them. But Microsoft, you know, has been in Asia for 35 years um, and globally for 45. We have, uh, we're not only enabling customers, we're also creating products. We're driving research. We have a huge, uh, we have, like I said, 15,000 people between China and India. So real products and solutions are being developed and designed in Asia by, by people here locally. The unmatched breadth of technology, uh, I couldn't go into the details of the Founders Hub, but the Founders Hub is really a startup kit. It's like a DIY for uh, anyone starting us, uh, you know, you have a license for email, you can do Azure consumption, we'll do, you, you can work on your CRM platform, you can collaborate on teams, we'll secure you through our, our security solutions. Um, and we will provide you power apps to help automate your business on an ongoing basis. So just the breadth of technology that we bring in is, is, is actually pretty convincing and unparalleled. Our cultural values align to the Asia region. We champion empathy in a huge way. We champion collaboration in a huge way. Uh, and therefore, we're probably one of the organizations that has made empathy, inclusion, and collaboration, the forefront of we are who we are culturally. As good corporate citizens, we do beyond uh, you know, what, uh, what is expected from a, from a company that is publicly traded. We work with communities through Microsoft philanthropy. Um, we work with communities to help them uh, get, ac get access to uh, and get included in the financial uh, progress that, that we're making. And we're progressively focusing on sustainability goals. I can't think of another company that has gone on record to not only suggest that by 2030 we'll be neutral, we have also promised that by 2050, we will have eliminated all our uh, emissions in our, ever generated in our history. That's a very tall order. We have committed to uh, water replenishment as much as we use. We've committed to zero waste. And in addition, we have created a climate investment fund, which is a billion dollar fund that helps with technologies and solutions 
that will create a better environment in the future. Just a few days ago, earlier in this week, uh, we released a post that we're investing in a company that is going to create sustainable aviation fuel. So closing the digital divide through widespread digital upskilling initiatives, creating in inclusive tech, and empowering a minority and underserved group for equal access to technology is probably what differentiates us. Interesting, great, thank you. Um, now, I would like to discuss a bit broader sort of societal uh, 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 topic um, within the technology. So, so it's been, it's hard to believe, but it's been already three years since the, since the pandemic uh, started. And throughout globally, businesses, societies, even the governments, they are, uh, we've seen a massive shift to, to digital during these time. And as you mentioned, a, a lot of leapfrog happened, happened in, uh, in Asia. How, how does uh, Asia's big business, small businesses, um, even government services, uh, digital transformation uh, compare with more sort of mature uh, markets such as the US, EU, or even Japan in that perspective? How, how, how is the rate of the acceleration? How do you see it? Yeah, how, how's it different from the, from the rest of the world? Yeah, uh, uh, Akito, I think probably that's one of the hardest questions uh, that you've asked me because, the, like I said at the start, we have, uh, like we have Japan, New Zealand, uh, and Australia, we have markets like um, Cambodia, Laos, uh, uh, Myanmar, uh, which are at very different stages of evolution in the development cycle. But if I were to kind of point out to a couple of things, uh, and let me start by, you know, inflation has been top of mind. Uh, in the U.S., we're saying inflation numbers that are the highest since the early 80s. Uh, we're seeing high levels of inflation in the developing markets also set in. But we are seeing our role as a deflationary trend. So we see tech as becoming a deflationary trend in an inflationary world. Because what tech is really going to do is help remove inefficiencies, right? create better supply chains, uh, reduce labor shortages so as to create productivity, uh, help with optimizing of, of, of resources, of energy, of, of utility. And, and therefore, our role has become even more significant uh, in the markets here. Big tech can help governments become more productive and unlock efficiency, improve community outreach and access to service. The runway is immense, whether you think about uh, healthcare, you know, we helped enable rollout vaccines and telemedicine for safety. As a matter of fact, we're now working with, with uh, uh, Singapore government on certain areas of, um, of hololenses in surgery, which I think will be very path breaking. And it's not about high end only Akito, it's, uh, Digital helps create capacity. Capacity at a cost that is much lower than finding doctors and nurses all the time. The second is education. Uh, you know, 200 million students stayed in school through the pandemic um, and 180,000 edu educational institutions use Teams. We've helped many banks modernize they got tested quite severely through the pandemic. Employability is one big area where we can work with the government. I often say that today, our biggest constraint is human capital. And that human capital is not only being felt by the new industries that are trying to recruit, but even traditional tech industries. 145 million, 149 million jobs will get created in the next five years and up to 700 million in the next five. So we have a very big responsibility to work with governments, to work with institutions and communities. Technology has unlocked a lot of, of opportunity, a prime example, and I'll share with you from Indonesia. A partner, Bukala Park, is working to help 64 million micro SMEs operate online, transforming them from traditional convenience stores into centers for banking, 
you know, I, I, I had this unique opportunity to speak with uh, one of their founders uh, a few weeks ago. And I was just uh, so surprised positively by the innovation. Uh, he, he basically said, why couldn't those convenience stores be places like become banks? You, you can collect money from there. You can pay bills there. You can buy tickets there online. And as you know, Indonesia, about two thirds of the population is not banked. We also made possible because of the digital wallet that they have with Bukala Park. But on average, these expanded capabilities help support mom and pop stores because this digital wallet became a great way for the economies to continue to transact at the micro level. So th this is one among the many examples I, I have, but I wanna kind of just say at the end, this is a two-way street. Uh, we have an equal responsibility as a corporation to bring the best that we have to, the, to our governments and help them shape the agenda for the future. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned about the human capital. Uh, besides from that, um, if I were a CEO of a traditional company, if I were a, a government officials, and you know, we've been accelerating digital shifts throughout the past three years, what more could they do? What, what are the new other opportunities that they could look into to better serve their customers or their societies or their people? I'd say uh, two things, sir, most certainly beyond the skilling agenda that I spoke about, which is actually an issue now, and it's only going to get severe in the future. The second is about, about rules, uh, about regulations. Uh, I think there is a, an opportunity for us to collaborate with the government to help create an environment where adoption of technology gets accelerated where new technology can get tested. And that way we enable transformation at the grassroots, which is pretty inconsistent in many parts of Asia. Uh, and especially as I, if I include the developed markets. So, so the runways is, is quite significant. I think the second area is a broader topic around, you know, how are we going to hand over a better earth uh, to the next generation? Um, Governments probably should legislate a standardized approach to carbon emission. Uh, I don't think two, any two companies measure their emissions in the same way as two nations don't measure emissions in the same way. Um, we're seeing uh, companies uh, adopting some clever carbon accounting uh, and, and, and we see evidence of greenwashing as well. Uh, so some legislation around and that will be very, very appropriate. And the third is, I think we need to automate um, measurements and mechanisms, um, almost like that has been done in finance so that we can measure, mitigate and report at scale, which is why when we took the pledge uh, of, of our own sustainability commitment, we asked ourselves how we could help our customers and we launched the cloud for sustainability, which essentially helps companies measure carbon emissions set goals, take actions and reduce them. Uh, and we're very confident that while we enable our progress to becoming carbon negative, water positive, zero waste, uh, some of these best practices, solutions and products and ideas we want to offer to, the gov to governments, to communities and to enterprises. Great, thank you. Um, we have a, a question uh, from our audience, um, and I will sort of elaborate this question. So the, the question is specifically about uh, fighting piracy. However, I would like to ask a bit broader question, which is a, a topic of digital trust, which is a huge, huge, huge topic, not only in Asia, globally. Now, how is Microsoft, uh, what is Microsoft doing to ensure uh, digital trust, and what should government companies, the user of technology uh, do to, to better, um, to ensure digital trust uh, much better than, than right now? What are the issues? How can we solve these issues? Akira, that's, that's a terrific question. And, and thank you for framing it in a way that we can actually perhaps create some progress around it. Um, if we go back into, into time and we look at 
what happened in history where uh, in the 1920s and 30s standard oil um, became so powerful that they had to ensure that um, they regulated that industry. Even that happened to banks. And we hear this rhetoric about, about um, regulation in our industry quite a lot. As a matter of fact, our vice chairman, uh, you know, Brad Smith has written a book, book called Tools and Weapons. And it's very interesting, which is how can technology be a tool and perhaps even become a weapon? Uh, which is the negative side of technology. And we, we are one of the biggest proponents of ensuring that technology is trusted, technology is in open systems, right? We have a fundamental belief that technology has to be in open systems, which is why the whole notion of democratizing technology right? uh, and allowing people to create companies, solutions and products that can scale anywhere. All tech companies have a very important role to play that we have to ensure that the consumers of our companies, enterprises, communities, governments, feel that we have their best interest in mind. The progress of the world today can perhaps only be limited by people not wanting to adopt the latest technology for the fear of compromise of data. Great, thank you. Um, we are running out of our time. One last question, since we have one last question. Um, Microsoft has announced a, a large acquisition in the, the Activision quite recently. What's your view in, in I mean, first of all, what's the reason behind it? And then what's your view on the, on the metaverse, which has become a huge uh, term in the, in the, in the tech, tech scene? That would be my last question. Uh, you know, as enterprises accelerate, Akito, uh, their digital transformation journey, metaverses will help empower employees, optimize operations, transform products, and better engage customers. And it's really a convergence of the physical and digital world. Uh, it might sound like something new, but when we replicate a factory in a digital world, that is a virtual reality, that is metaverse, right? And we've done that for uh, one of the largest CPG companies in the world. We help them replicate and create an environment that simulates their factory environment so they can then start to optimize there. And we see this, when, when you start to have a surgeon in Dubai and New York operate on a patient at the same time, that is metaverse. That is the convergence of physical and digital. So we're really excited about it. And your, your point on uh, the other question you asked on, on the latest acquisition, uh, we believe uh, entertainment and empowering uh, entertainment and gamers is a big opportunity for, for us. Uh, we have a very successful gaming business uh, with the Game Pass, uh, which has grown quite significantly over the last 12, 18 months. And we're excited about the capabilities that get added with this new acquisition. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ahmed, for joining. It was a wonderful conversation. And thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.